Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Coup de Villa channel. I'm Scott Cooper, and I'm here with Noah Fisher and Tommy Lazaridis to review Liverpool versus Aston Villa from Saturday. Yes, the European dry, uh, dream keeps going. One point it was a huge point. Yeah, disappointing to concede late, but we will be getting into all of that and much more after this. Okay, so yes, we were away at Anfield uh, against Liverpool um, going for that European spot. We needed something out of this game, and with Tottenham losing uh, before we kicked off, we got that uh, that big sort of, um, you know, kick to say we can do this, you know, bit of an, a bit of a confidence lift. But before we get into the match, Tommy, let's talk about last week. We got a few comments you wanted to highlight, talk about some um, some of our interactions. Yeah, I mean, it's probably just the usual suspects. Always Muhammad Adam looks like a, you know, we're probably the closest thing to a villa presence in Norway. So, um, yeah, I, I do agree with Muhammad. It looks like the Barca guy, Matthew Alemani, has, has done a 360 and decided to stay there. I think it's his loss, not ours. Um, mm. Yes, yeah, so I certainly think we need some height and pace. Um, ideally, in one player would be great. Um, Jurgen Kuipers, uh, I think he's done his PhD in uh, grammar. So, uh, yes, we will make sure we update the verse. To versus, yes. uh, that, that's Scott's really fault, by the way. Ripping to yeah, Scott that, in the that's comments. That's my bad. I thought yeah, you I could do it both that. ways, but I will go back to just VS with no comma required. Let's go. Yes, yes, yes. Usually when, when you say we, you can do it both ways, verse, verse, versus is definitely what comes to everyone's mind first. Um, Gray and Howrahan, whether it's Connor's relation or not, even though it's a variation. Um, yeah, like I said, you know, last game was a great performance and looks like we uh, we, we look to continue it into the Liverpool game, which, which we'll touch on shortly. Um, were we taking bets before the game? What minute Kane did die for a pen? Michael Higgins, you're right. You can always guarantee against Spurs, Kane will probably be awarded a pen. Um, Stellar's J looks like a new one, right? So um, they said, really, really noticed the Villa discipline that led to all those offsides for Spurs. Good luck in your push for Europa League. Looks like a neutral. Um, and yeah, just giving praise to Emery. I think obviously, you know, we'll touch on this shortly as well. Looks like the, the high line actually seemed to work against Liverpool as well. Mm. Um, obviously cancelling out Luis Diaz's goal. And yeah, you know, silly business. We'll say hi to the Cooper family as well. So usual suspects. Um, I think also eclipsing 601 followers. I don't know if we yes. announced that last time. So yes, yes, you know we're we're at six hundred. Could we get to a thousand by the end of the year? Possibly. Who knows? Let's hope so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Reach. We're loving the um, interactions. We're loving all your support. Please like and subscribe if you haven't. I know there's many of you that watch these videos that are not subscribed, and please, if you could do that, that'd be great. And yep. Noah, um, talk about some of our socials. So get involved. All the social links are always at the top of the channel um, in the accounts. I think you guys see all the logos there. Have a bit of a look and. Chuck us a follow on all of those ones um, because there will be a giveaway at the end of the year. Um, obviously, it's coming soon, but that's only going to be posted on our socials. So you want to be know about that one, get involved on the socials and yeah, looking forward to getting more interactions on there. Is, awesome. is, what's, the, what's the giveaway prize now? Is it true that it's your championship cricket jock strap? <laughs> well, that's, that's priceless, that one. <laughs> that is priceless. Uh, Scott called shock run on that one. So that's uh, on the way to Perth for Scott to have, but uh, the the giveaway prize not to be announced yet, but it's uh gonna be very cool. Something Coot de Villa yeah. based because I was gonna have any merch yet, like but it. yeah. And it's... I think I think I'll I think I'll update my uh my end of year Villa prediction. If we make Europa Conference, I will bash the shit out of these shorts, Noah. So there yeah. you go. Lower we know we're waiting for it, mate. I've yeah, lowered well, my well, expectations for seventh. Well, yeah, we're looking. It was always seventh. It was, it was always <laughs> Europe. Yeah, it was yeah. Europe. <laughs> and well, um. Okay. If we if we win next week, you're take you're smashing them on screen. So we Absolutely. look forward to that. Um, so yeah, so uh, let's get into the game. Um, uh, you know, it was a big big task. You know, Liverpool I think had won nine in a row going into this game. Um, they had only lost once at um, Anfield all season to Leeds. Um, and uh, yeah, we really needed something, and especially with like as we spoke about before, Brentford going to Tottenham and winning three um, one. It was all set up for something special and we we got something special in that first half Noah um unbelievable first half performance totally dominated the game we were we were passing the ball possession was great the the defending was great it was um yeah just an amazing start to the match 
Oh, incredible start to the match. And i got to say thanks to uh, VAR for going in our favourite. Actually, even the start of the game as well with the penalty because I swear there's been so many inst- like so many times where a penalty call like that's happened for us and it's never been given. But I guess because the ref was so bang on and directly gave the penalty instantly. I've never actually seen a decision given so clearly. No thought time at all. Um, mm-hmm. And get straight to the other card. And looking back, it was definitely a penalty. Uh, if yep. it wasn't given, I would be interested to see what would have happened. Um, unfortunately, Ollie Watkins uh, couldn't hold his nerve and put it wide. Very disappointing. I was on a live call with my mates, actually, and I was like, put in the book, put in the book. You know, we haven't missed in ages, and 13th mm. time unlucky for, for Aston Villa missing a penalty. Um, but yeah, as you it was said, a, the, the first half. It was half, a terrible penalty. Oh, it, it was. was. It was a terrible penalty. And, uh, and Tommy, this um, I want to ask you, um, what does this mean for Ollie as our penalty taker going forward? Would you give him another chance or would you give someone else a go? I think to just spray it wide completely, I think you've got to give someone else a chance. I'd probably be I, – I, my best guess is Dougie and it seems to be the general consensus amongst yeah. the Villa fans. So um, my, my best guess is Dougie. I, I think, like I said, to spray it wide just doesn't make sense. If it's on target, it's a great save by Allison. understand, but – to spray it wide just lacked confidence, to be honest. And I said this kind of pre, pre-podcast, pre right? So um, I think he had his little purple patch. He's done great, but he kind of has drifted off a bit. So I actually think a high-profile striker is still a key priority going into next season, especially if we qualify for Europa. Yep, and we'll, we'll be talking about that, of course, over the yep. summer with all the transfer links and um, news that's going to be coming in a very busy summer for us. Um, but, yeah, um, we go 1-0 up not long after that, Noah. Jacob Ramsey, uh, sixth goal this season. Great ball from Dougie. And, um, yeah, he Alexander-Arnold sort of left him, left him uh, loose on the back post and a great finish. Uh, honestly, I think we spoke about it last podcast how much Jacob Ramsey is thriving in this new role he's been given by Unai Emery. And this game kind of sums it up because I think he went through a patch where he wasn't doing so well in the position, a little bit lackluster yeah. performances. Um, but the last two weeks, he's just proved how good of a midfielder he is. And I think he can even get even better than that. I think, I think a lot of the media will be on Alexander Arnold's defending because it always is when he mm. doesn't mark someone. But you know, Leon Bailey has the shot, which I actually can't believe he took the shot, by the way. I was like, why is he taking that shot? But the ball from Douglas Louise is incredible. That is a pinpoint pass. And Jacob Ramsey had the easiest job in the world. If he got anything on, it was going in the back of the net. And put a crest uh, across Allison, and the celebration just makes it for me. Unbelievable. I, I don't know. I don't know if it was that easy finish because it's on his left foot. And no, there's, a, there's a bit of an angle. Easy. Was an easy opposite for yeah. you know probably what thirty centimeter gap which he found and Allison's a world class keeper so I think the finish was phenomenal and celebration probably even better right and then his celebration one of was own, unreal the, the it chance, was great I, I thought our fans actually out cheered theirs and they're usually oh, they quite uh, quite loud the other Anfield folks yeah and we could have scored from another free kick like just not long after that when we played that yeah. that little routine I love that where Ramsey again. And that is a world, world-class save. And I think, you know, Allison's probably not had his best kind of year or 18 months, but this is back to sort of when he was maybe the best in the world. Uh, I think maybe Courtois or someone like that might be better than him right now, maybe even Emmy as well, being the World Cup champion, of course. But uh, that save was world-class and, um, yeah, because it was a good good finish, I think, from Ramsey. He gets a bit of height on it. It's definitely on target going into that top corner, um, but unfortunate not to go 2-0 up there. Tommy, is what did you think of that routine? Do you think uh, Austin McPhee, is, uh, that was one of his from the training, training ground? Well, I think as we're nearing the end of the season and Emery's probably looking to shake up the management staff, everyone's probably starting to pull their finger out. And yeah, I think that was a bit of a masterclass from McPhee. Um, although that being said, I don't think we've seen it before pre-Emery. So um, I'm going to probably assume that Emery had a, some some significant influence in that. I still think he should have probably cut it across. I saw three players on side behind the ball. So mm. that's just my opinion. But again, if it goes in, he's a hero. If it doesn't, you know, you'll say, why didn't he square it back? Great save by Allison. you know, not just crediting him. But yeah. I think he should have probably been cut across. Fair enough, fair enough. And, um, yeah, we go in 1-0. Uh, Liverpool haven't had a, a shot on target at this point. Um, and, um, you know, we're 1-0 up. We could be 2-0 up with, with the penalty. And um, I felt really confident that we'd get something out of the game at this point, um, you know, that we'd, um, you know, come out in the second half and, you know, it would get harder and harder for Liverpool as the game went on. Um, you know, and then there was, uh, Noah, the, the Mings incident. 
um, where he gets the high foot and gets Cody Gakpo right in the chest. Um, it was, uh, you know, it was one of those ones. Could have been a red card, I think. Um, what were your thoughts on it? Yeah, well, I'm not sure if you guys have seen it, but when Jota kicked, was it the Tottenham player, Oliver Skip in the head, that was just given a yellow card and Liverpool fans were saying, oh, it should never have been a red or whatever, you know, never a red. Um, right. And then as soon as it happens to a Liverpool player, they're like, oh my God, that's a red card. That's a red card. Mm. Um, I was actually quite surprised it wasn't given a red card, to be honest. I thought Tyre Mings was very lucky um, to get away with it. Um, just, I'm not sure you've seen the stud marks on, on Gakpo at the end of the game. It was, it, he went in with a bit of force. I know he got the ball. Yeah, like that, but I, I, I'm not going to say it's De Jong. It's not like De Jong, Noah. That's the no. problem. He didn't go in. And I think he got he got full ball and then there's a bit he of did. I think I think it's more the side of the boot and a bit of stub. It wasn't a full stud to the chest, and I think that's probably what got him out of jail because they did review it, Noah. And I, I think they did. So much but I, I believe if he was sent off, he would have stayed off the pitch. That that's that's my point of view. On yeah, it. I agree with that. I also think if he didn't touch the ball slightly, he would have been sent off. The fact Agreed. that he he got just a you know a little bit on the ball and actually got the ball before he studded him in the chest. Um, and I don't think it was malicious. I don't think he tried to hurt him as well. Like, you know, sometimes you can tell, oh, he's done him there. You know, that that was that was nasty. I don't I never felt like, you know, he tried to do him. Yeah. But he hasn't got that he hasn't got that background for it as well. Like no. if that's a Ramos or a Pepe or someone, you're probably gonna send them straight off. You know it's in their repertoire. Yeah, definitely. But um, yeah, we can say we were a bit fortunate there. And then we were a bit fortunate later, Tommy, when um, Liverpool seemed to have scored and um, the goal was disallowed for an offside where um, the the referee went over to the monitor, which you don't see very often for an offside. But I guess it was it was explained that they knew that Van Dijk was offside, but they wanted the referee to see if he thought he was interfering with play because the ball comes back off Consa and you've got to make the decision, was Consa uh, was that a deliberate touch from Conser, which he um, decided it wasn't a deliberate touch. So that makes Van Dyke offside. What were your thoughts on that one? Yeah, there's a lot of like ifs and what's in this grey area. And I think that's mm. the problem with VAR now, right? So um, look, all I can say is I'm glad it's worked in our favour. It seems to have done us more justice than injustice recently, Yeah. Um, especially the last second half of this season. So look, we'll take it. Look, I'm not too sure about the ruling. You know, Noel probably knows a bit more than me on that. But look, I'm, I'm just glad it worked out in our favour. I was actually buzzing as well because it's Liverpool and fuck them. <laughs> look, I'm 100% on that bandwagon too. Thanks again. I was going to say, maybe just go, rewinding back to Mings, you know, yeah. even before the red card and, you know, that was probably... He was a colossal, catalog. yeah. Unreal. Yeah, it was, I, I, was, I think he probably put in a man of the match performance. I think a lot of people were between him, McGinn, uh, Martinez and, and Ramsey. I actually went McGinn, I actually went Mings, um, Ma, Ramsey, Martinez, 3-2-1. Yep. Um, I, th- I thought Malings, Malings, Mings was a yeah. colossus for us in the back. I think that, uh, yeah, Consul was really good too. I, I really enjoyed some of like, his play. Um, uh, but the one issue that we might have going into next week, Noah, is we got Dingue and Moreno both injured now. Um, so, you know, um, will we have a fit left back for Brighton? And if not, what does that mean? Who do we play there? What What, what do you think will happen if they both are unavailable? Uh, well, I know Moreno is definitely out. Yeah, uh, I believe he's on his hamstring, so that's end of his season. He's been incredible for us since we signed him for what twelve million pounds or something like that. Like absolutely remarkable signing. I think Dinier will be fine. I, yep. I honestly think he'll be fine, but I wouldn't be surprised if they put Ashley Young to left back. Yeah, he's played left back before. He's played right back before, and I think he actually did just like a very good job there mm-hmm. uh, last night. Um, yeah, I, I just say that if Dinier is not, I'll even even if Dinier is fit, I'd put Young to left back. Yep. Yeah. And um uh Diogo Carlos was wasn't even on the bench last night. Um uh, that was a bit of a strange one because I thought, you know, if you know you could put, you know, maybe Ming's left back and bring in Carlos, but I'm not really sure. Do you know anything, Noah, about like why he wasn't in the squad? Uh no, the last thing I heard was this Catania was gonna be out because of injury. I don't maybe Carlos was ill. That's I haven't listened to Emery's uh press conference yet, so I haven't heard anything. I'm sure mm. that's something they would have asked. Um, but yeah. Oh, interesting to see. But um, yeah, I mean, we were obviously under a lot of pressure in those last sort of 15, 20 minutes, um, especially with the 10 minutes injury time, which, you know, none of us villains really like to see. And, 
you know, Bobby Firmino scores the goal to equalize. Um, probably the only time in the match where Mings got the wrong side of his man. And, you know, it was a good ball by Salah. And you can say, look, you know, these things can, can happen. I'm not going to go in on Mings. Like he had an absolutely magnificent game and, um, you know, was our man of the match by far, in my opinion. So um, that was a bit unfortunate, but, you know, the point, and the fact that we still hung on, because there was still probably five or six minutes after the goal to, to hang on. Well, ten, yeah, ten, ten minutes, was yeah. it? Yeah, wow. So, um, yeah, there was still plenty of time for Liverpool to go on and win it. Um, but we we held on. We we held on for that point. It was so important not to lose that match. Oh, incredibly! I think I said last episode, Scott, that we needed four points from these last two games to get European football. I'd say what it's going to be bang on. It's we need to get four points and. I'll tell you, if we won that game, we could we could have got Europa League, but I didn't think we were going to win the game going into it. No. And getting a point to the best result, one of the best results we could have asked for. 10 minutes of stoppage time, absolute heart attacks at like left, right, and center. I could at not Anfield. believe. Oh, I'd answer as well. And at Anfield, they're pretty good at holding home fort. Oh, they are. They've they had a really good patch probably the last two months as well. But when, well, the last time we won there was 1-0 with uh, Gabby Bonlahor scoring. Wow. But actually, before that, we um, had a decent period there when like we had Benteke, Gabby, and Vyman. We actually played a ride at Anfield. But we haven't won there since 2014. So that's coming up 10 years. Wow. Uh, you know, we had players like Rudy Gestead scoring a couple of goals there. You know, We're not doing so well. But yeah, uh, result, one point's massive. And I believe that we're going to push on and get Europa Conference League, which I'm going to be stoked for. Definitely. I'm I delighted. I'm delighted down. with the point. Yeah, I always I remember if we do predictions, I actually said I think it's going to come down to the last game of the season. I'm actually not ruling out Southampton um, winning or drawing tomorrow. I think a lot of these lower teams, you look at Forest as well, right? They've got a point to prove. I know Southampton are down and out, but I think they're going to come in and at least put in a performance. And Brighton have had a very heavy schedule, which they're probably not used to. Um, they've been playing... Some injuries sort of, as well. Yeah, so... I mean, it could happen. You know, it's football's a funny game. And if Southampton could get something, then we know that if we win next week, not only do we finish in the top seven, we, we finish in the top six. So Correct. that would be great if they did something for us. But I'm not holding my breath because Southampton are a pretty shocking team and they're, they are away at Brighton. So, but you never know. Um, but yeah, there was one thing last night when Douglas Louise came off, Noah, I was really like, that was a bit of a... I was a bit shocked, a bit of a head scratch that one because I thought he was having a great game. And and when I saw Dendonka warming up and coming on the pitch, I thought, oh, he'll probably take Kamara off because Kamara's still coming back, you know, like he's still kind of finding his uh, fitness. But when uh, Douglas Louise came off, I thought that we were a little bit panicky in the middle for that last sort of 10 minutes or so. I mean, as you said, Louise is just so calm when he mm. has the ball. So is Kamara, by the way, but... I would have just kept them both in there. I don't, I'm actually not sure what the decision was. Again, I haven't watched back um, the press conference. I don't know if there was just tiredness or if he was a bit sore. I don't, I don't know. Nah, um, but not I, done, not I think done. coming into the last 10 minutes of stoppage time, when I think they would have known there was going to be a fair bit, you probably want your best two ball-playing midfielders on the pitch. And that's what Douglas Weiss has been this season. He won the Coupe de Villa Player of the Year, I guess you he could did. say. You know, he everyone, did. everyone loved his season and... Uh, as I said, Kamara might have come off just, you know, first full game back, but I don't know why Dougie came off because he was controlling yeah, that game I, all day. I, I, I'm not, I'm not, if, if that was, a, I think that was actually a bad sub. If it wasn't mm. fatigue or injury, and I actually think Dougie's the type to play through injury. Um, he, He's a bit of a unit and, and Mr. Reliable for us. So I think Emery actually went for his best to ball winning midfielders instead of ball playing. And yeah. I think that was a bad sub. But I'm not calling think, out Dan Donka though, because Dan Donka's been actually been very good for us this season. Yeah. I know he's been good, but just in that game. In we that game, I agree. And, and I agree. We weren't, we weren't really closing him down. So at least when we had the ball, you know, make the most of it. We just had Konza hoofing it to Allison and then they start play again. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, we kind of lost the momentum and the control that's right. of the game there. We're under the pump. And, and so even from their goal, Noah, I actually thought, fuck, here we go. You know, it's going to yeah, be a last that's... minute. So I thought I, I thought mean... defending, the whole defense deserves a, a, an award. And, you know, Young, I thought he'd done a pretty good job on Salah and there's just that one second of brilliance and nothing oh, against Young. What could, what could you he know? do? Yeah, that's no. like, unbelievable no. ball. And it was written in the stars, wasn't it? It was written in the stars. Yeah, well, yeah, well, when I when they brought on Firmino and, and James Milner, there was a part of me thinking, Ooh, this is sort of maybe, um, you know, some sort of uh, gesture. You know, this might not be, this might be good for us, but you know, of course, Firmino gets a goal, and um, 
typical Villa. But you know, we we got the point, and that's what we went there for to get a result. We got the result. Um, with the uh, another thing on the Louise thing, you're like if they brought on Den Donker against maybe an Everton or a Leeds, when you know they're going to put balls in and there's going to be big fellas in the box. His extra height, I could maybe get that, but Liverpool aren't that sort of team. Like they don't really have a no. big centre forward, or you know they're not going to like lump balls in, right? So, um, yeah, that's why I also thought that was a bit bit of a weird one. But you know, I'm not knocking Emmy. He's uh, Emery. He's he's un- he's un- amazing. So, and this was another uh, another masterclass because like he actually sh- showed it the rolodex of all his different playing styles in this one game. We had the possession in the first half, the 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 patient possession. We had the counter-attack in the second half. We had the six at the back for a while. You know, we had the um pressing and you know we 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 were doing a bit of everything within the same game. And that just shows that he is top, top quality coach. And um, you know, we're we're really we're sort of the players are just buying into it so much, Noah. I mean it's the first time I've seen with the Villa manager. Obviously I haven't seen as many managers as you and and Tommy Scott, but to be able to adjust in game, I've mm. never seen it happen so effectively. Um, and it's something that I just love saying, like I was just thinking we're going to hold on, you know, then that, that ball from Salah just pinpoint, you know, absolutely pinpoint. But as you said, the adjustments mid game were just, yeah, I can't, I can't describe it. He's just such a, such a good manager. And I've got friends that are Arsenal fans and they hate Emery. Yeah. They think he's the worst thing since sliced bread. You know what I mean? Like it just, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I heard another podcast where they sort of said that the way he was treated at Arsenal with the, the fact that, you know, his voice is a little bit funny or whatever and he, he kind yeah. of doesn't speak English very well, right? Yeah. Or, you know, he's he's improved a bit now. But back then, the way that they used to sort of like, you know, torment him and sort of, you know, take the piss basically, that, that, that's like terrible. And like, I and don't also- think that would be allowed now because, you know, you see all these players that – you know, have like, you know, maybe a lisp or something. And like, you know, they they when they do an interview these days, everyone's like, well done, you know, getting behind them. You know, people are a bit more, you know, open to sort of getting behind these. The, I mean, not saying he had his, a disability, but, you know, you're you're taking the piss out of him because he can't speak English. English yeah. And it's not his first language. So, like, it's... And he it, speaks English. He speaks English, but because Spanish, what is it? Uh, uh, v is B. Mm, that was the only thing. Yeah. And again, That's this all it Spanish... Was. Spanish is his native tongue. And second of all, you look at Arsenal as well, Noah and Scotty. He, he came in when when they were on this decline. You know, I think that's also partly why Wenger gave up because they're not invested. Cronkies are tight ass. And Emery done pretty good with what he had at his disposal, right? And he brought a lot of these youngsters through that we're starting to see flourish. What is it? Jack, uh, not Jack. It's um, uh, Smith Saka, Rowe, Martinelli, Sika, Saka. Yeah, Martinelli, Smith Rowe, Saka. And funny enough, now they're trying to challenge anyway, not challenging mm. yet, but uh, they're trying to challenge. And it's all these plays that he brought through and gave a chance to. So um, I thought he'd done extremely well with what he had at his disposal. I mean, how and many it's, times and it's never easy. It's like you see what no. happened with David Moyes when he got the job at Man United. Big He's getting thrown field. in after a legend has been there for so long. It's never going to be easy. Well, well, didn't you make the Europa League David, final? He did. Yeah, yeah, he did. He, he had like Shamak and Giroud or whoever it was, right? Yeah, some I don't know. Yeah, they lost um, like four one to Chelsea Sh- or Shamak something. But Shamak and Betna. But um, a- again, Moyes actually had money thrown at him. Em- Emery had nothing, Noah. Yeah, no. exactly. I know because yeah. they were still paying off the stadium and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, no. I mean, look, it's it's their it's their loss. It's our gain. I I think. And, and you know, he's he's obviously gone back to Spain and he's gone to PSG as well. In between us, you know, Arsenal and Villa, and uh, done a great job there. And um, yeah, like he's he's really um, I think buying what the owners have have sold to him about Villa and about what we can do and the, the improvements to the stadium and the, the, the sort of links with, you know, other clubs in, you know, we're, um, you know, the, all the, we'll get onto um, uh, the Philadelphia guy, Chris Heck, who has come in and, you know, he's going to, you know, rejuvenate our sort of marketing and, um, you know, so what's his official position? He's uh, the, they, they announced it. I'll get it off on my phone that they put on the Facebook page, but, He's just he did such a good job at the 76ers in the NBA. Yeah. Um, and that's such a hard thing to do because it's they're all I think, like Philadelphia's not the biggest market team, as Tommy would know, being a bit more of a basketball fan, I think, to you, Scotty. But mm-hmm. I'll see if I can get it. Because they put it up as like a V Sports announcement, which is obviously there. Yeah, and it co- and it coincides with our uh you know, pr- uh, preseason tour of America. So we are gonna be playing games on the on the uh, East Coast 
there. So I think maybe we could see us playing in Philadelphia. I think that is one of the the cities um, that has been named. I don't think these schedules come out yet, but um, I think there's a uh, Brighton, Chelsea, Newcastle, some other teams in that in that little uh, mini tournament preseason tournament. So that's going to be interesting to see. And any any of you watching that are watching from the United States and are planning on going to some of these games, please let us know because we had Villa come to Australia this preseason and we had a great time up in Brisbane and here in Perth and uh, Townsville as well. So yeah, please let us know because we'd love to see you guys, uh, you know, maybe take some footage or whatever, like send us, send it to us. But um, yeah, the other uh, announcement, Tommy, um, that seems like uh, that uh, Matei Alneni from um, Barcelona has done a 180 and has decided to stay at Barcelona. Um, what are your thoughts on that one? I think, you know, gone from Barca to Villa. Uh, and again, it's also how credible was that rumour, Scott, right? Like, you know, you only you only know what you know, but it seems like he was apparently set to sign and he didn't. And yeah, look, but he's been at Barca for a while and he said it's his home and you can't blame him, to be honest. And it is a change of culture going from Spain to the UK and Look, not, nothing against Villa, but, you know, may, maybe just the project wasn't big enough. Emery bought in, and I think now, you know, it's starting to come to fruition, and I think he's been promised a war chest, but maybe Alemani expected more than, than maybe what was presented to him. So some people are going to buy into the Villa vision, some aren't, Scott, right? And Barca are well, kind of more established and having that success, you know, winning La Liga. I think they clear one of this year. So I think, yeah, he's probably happy there. Um, still don't understand, though, because with their whole fin- F- financial fair play, um, but I reckon they're probably paying him a ton to operate under, you know, stringent budgets at the moment. Yeah, so I mean, the, talks, the, I the, yeah, the Spanish reports, Noah said that he looked at the Villa project and he wasn't impressed. But I don't know if I, you know, take too much heed for these little sort of like Barcelona newspapers putting it this way. Um, I don't know. What, what are your thoughts? Do you think he would have looked at our squad and our finances and been turned off? Well, I don't think so. When you've got the fifth richest owners in the league, I don't think the finances would be an issue. Uh, but when Fabricio Romano says, like, it's a done deal, it no, it's 99.9%. Agreed. It's very a done credible. deal. He's um, very credible. And he said that he was very impressed with Villa and our project and stuff. So I don't know what's to believe. But look, he's changed his mind. Who cares? Move on and go again. Like, it's not the end of the world. I think that Langer might have been good. He would have had someone to work with because I'm going to keep him in a position. Um, but Lang has done a great job since he's come in. So just, yeah, just move on. Yeah, Could I we think. Go back in... Sorry, go on, Scott. Uh, go... I, I just said, yeah, I don't think it's a massive loss. I think nah, we'll, we'll, I we'll recover. And I think Emery's, you know, pretty hands on when it comes to picking players himself. So, you know, I, I trust him to, you know, pick the right players and, you know, take us on next season. Oh, and I still wonder if we're going to be in for the Real Betis sporting director. I think we went in for the Barca guy after the Betis dude turned us down. So I think he said he's going to commit till end of season and we'll reevaluate. So we'll see how that plans out. Looks like there's a big concentration on Spain at the moment. I think we're looking to raid Villarreal, Danny Parejo, Pau Torres probably wouldn't be two bad players. Pereira's 34, so that kind of goes against, you know, um, Emery's mantra and philosophy. So um, be fun to see how that pans out. But he seems pretty keen from what I'm seeing. And they're willing to pay a, a decent compensation to Villarreal. Again, like, I don't know how much that would be for a 34-year-old, but I'm guessing Pereira means quite a lot to that club. Yeah, I mean, he's he's a good player. He's a bit old, but, you know, if he could, you know, come in and do a job, you know, maybe not play every game or, you know, whatever. And, you know, if we are in Europe, we're going to have plenty of games to play. So, yeah, You're that could right. be interesting. That makes, that makes sense, right? If we offer Pereira something like a three-year contract, he's probably not going to play all three years, but at least he's getting, you know, he's getting some sort of income in the door. Yeah, and the the fact that um, I think we need to certainly get just numbers in bodies. We our squad is pretty thin, and um, you know, we 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 need sort of backup in certain positions. If we're going to be playing two games a a a day a, a week we we need we need uh, bodies we need players and we need yep. to fill that squad so yeah hopefully he will do that um we uh no you want to talk about Ashley Priest I saw yeah go, go ahead yeah so he's uh announced he's stepping down from the uh, Aston Villa correspondent and obviously we all had the chance to meet Ash in Brisbane and in Perth as well he was everywhere um but what a what a man he is to be honest like the people's reporter the people's writer for Aston Villa went to every game and yeah, he's going to be a big loss. Cause I think everyone kind of loves his, his work. Um, and people might not know that I had the chance to, to do a uni assignment on Ash. 
Um, we had to do it on a, on a journalist uh, feature report and Ash gave me half an hour or so of his time over Zoom, had to find the right time and everything and answered so many great questions for me. And I even sent Ash my report to him so he could have a bit of a read. And he said how emotional it made him to look back on his time and be like, as the Villa fan Ash, because he's just one of us. Yeah. And, like, the quote I had, like he gave me a really nice quote, which um was just incredible. And yeah, he's just just great guy. And he's going to be missed. But I think he's staying in the Birmingham Mail, but just doing a news Okay, well, good luck to yeah. Ashley Priest on your further endeavours. He's a great guy. We met him in Brisbane, and, um, yeah, he's a big Villa guy. So good luck, and, um, yeah, you're always welcome to come on Coup de Villa if you're, uh, if you're watching. Uh, we would love to, you know, get you on and let you talk about your time as the Villa reporter for Birmingham Mail. So, um, yeah, um, so well, let's look forward, guys. Let's look, do some permutations for now because we want to finish in that top seven. Six would be amazing. So um, what are your predictions for the Brighton game? And do you think um, Manchester City and um, maybe Southampton can do us a favour and get yeah. some points off Brighton and get us into six possibly? I, th- I think Southampton will draw with them. Um, I'm not ruling it out. I think they'll draw, yeah. Um, and I think I think City will do them. So I think they'll. They, you know, I'm probably glad they're playing Southampton than City, not the other way around. So, again, confidence will. Uh, you know, um, probably won't be in abundance for Brighton. And uh, Noah, Uh I don't sadly see Southampton doing us any favors. I think that they're. Okay, if, no. if you kind of look how how we were when we kind of got relegated, bottom of the Premier League, I don't think we won or got any other points. From when it was confirmed, um, it's a no. tough time. I think they'll kind of give the kids a bit of a run. I think they're going to get. But that's the thing you don't you don't know what to expect, Noah. And I think no. Che Adams and Salah Suarat again. That's my only reason for a Southampton at least draw. I, I just, say I, just I can't, I can't see it. I'm sorry. I and it's know, a derby mate. game as well for Brighton. <laughs> it's a derby game technically as well. They'll want to win that. No, no, but I think, I, I, I think... still think we'll get Conference League. And I'm going to go for a three nil win against Brighton. I think they're just going to be absolutely cooked. By the time I, get I, I think two, I was going to say I I thought two nil. Um, I think they'll have their chances, but I think we'll take ours. I think the high line will be in full effect. Um, yep. and I actually think we're going to grind out the last 15, 20 minutes of Grants Brighton like we did previously. A lot of time wasting, a lot of Emery tactics. Um, and I think we'll finish seventh comfortably. I hope so. I and, hope you're uh, right. Yeah, I think we'll finish. I think we'll win three two. I'm going to say. Uh, I think it's going to be a bit of a cracker, like something really kind of crazy could happen. And um, you know, maybe we get a last minute winner. Who knows? But um, yeah, I'm going to say three two. And Ollie back on the score sheet. Um, McGinn and maybe Duran's first goal to send mm. us into the Conference League. You know, I that think, would be I great. Think, I think I th- I'm just going to go based on form, and I think McGinn and Ramsey. McGinn seems to be loving oh, yeah. it. And I think Buendia and Oli get pretty pissed when he just pings him from outside the 18th. But, you know, you look back at Chelsea and there's, there's some times where it pays off. Um, so I think I think Ramsey and McGinn. But I think, I think our midfield's going to dominate theirs. I think Kamara and – I think Emery might have learned his lesson and play Louise and Kamara the full 90 if they're, if they're durable. All right. Well, um, that's probably about it for this week, guys. Thanks for all your help. Thanks for all your support. Thanks for all your comments. Please subscribe if you haven't. Good luck to the girls tonight. The women's team, they're playing um, playing Liverpool. They can only finish in fifth. They can't go up or down. But to finish fifth in that league, unbelievable achievement. To get to the FA Cup semifinal as well, Carla Ward, unbelievable. And the team, Rachel Daly, probably finished top goal scorer in the league, which is incredible. Um, and well done to them. Um, yeah, and fingers crossed we can do it next week. It's all happening. Please, I'm Villa fans. I will be thinking of you all watching on Sunday up the Villa, and we will see you after, hopefully, European qualification. See you later.